All right, guys, we have this M18-80, XC80 18 volt battery. As y'all can see, it's showing fully charged on the charger, but when you actually hit the fuel gauge, it only shows two bars, so that's not good. We need to open this thing up and we're gonna check all the cells and maybe see what's going on with this thing because this is a very expensive battery for it to already be failing. So we're gonna take it apart, see what's going on with it. Hopefully it's nothing with the BMS. If it's something with the cells, we might be able to fix it. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's going on. All right, guys, we have one of these Milwaukee 6.0 M12 batteries. As you can see, when I try to charge it, we get the red and green light of death. That's what I call it at least. And that means there's something wrong with this battery. So we're gonna go and open it up today and see if we can fix it. And what really sucks is this is the second 6.0 I've had do that. So I'm gonna, hopefully we can try to fix it. I've already kind of done some preliminary testing and I found that there's a cell group in here that's lower than the rest. And I think that's tripping the charger out. The cell group is not completely zero. So I think it can be saved. Worst case scenario, the cells are bad. Uh, maybe we can replace them. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and see what we find. And then in order to open up any of the Milwaukee batteries, it uses a security torque. So it's got a little pin in the middle, just a heads up. That's all you need to open these. Okay, we got the covers of the M1260 battery removed. These are the type of cells we're using. And I was actually able to find these cells from a supplier, a battery supplier for about $3 a piece. So I did go ahead and order four of these. This battery is wired in a two P3S configuration. So there's six cells total, two in parallel, and then two, three groups of those in series, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go and check the voltages of all the cell groups and find which one is bad. All right, as you can see, this cell group right here, 2.7 volts which is pretty much dead as far as capacity goes. That doesn't mean it's zero, so we could probably still rescue it. I'm also happy it's these cells right here because if they were in here, it'd be a little bit more challenging to get to the cells. So the first thing I'm gonna try to do is use a hobby charger and apply a voltage to try to charge these up to 4.2 volts. That's the cap on these cells. So we're gonna try that first and see if we can't just bring them back. And if we can't, then we're gonna replace the cells and I'll show you how to do that. All right, guys, so now we are charging the low group of cells. I went ahead and checked the other group of cells with the meter and we're reading 3.7 volts. So this cell is only a volt lower. It may be just because these drifted apart too far and maybe the BMS or the charger couldn't charge it and it went into some sort of fail safe. So I'm gonna charge this up to about 3.7 volts. I'm gonna monitor the charger. This will automatically cut off at 4.1 volts because I have it on lithium ion mode instead of 4.2 volts, which is like normal lithium batteries. So I'm gonna, just let this do its thing. I'm gonna sit here and watch it. I'm not gonna walk away just in case these start to get hot or anything. But yeah, let's just let it do that and see what it does. Seems like it's gonna take a charge. And the reason I would rather try to fix this battery is number one, it's not that old. And these are $100 a piece for six $3 cells and maybe a BMS in there somewhere, you know, plus the housing and all that. So I don't wanna just have to throw the battery away. But like I said, I have a whole nother one to fix. And then we also need to fix this 8.0, but I can't get to the screws because they're so deep into the battery. So I need to figure that out. But I would re also really like to fix this thing. And more than likely this has 4,000 milliamp cells because we have 8,000 milliamps of capacity. So there's probably a, a 2P 5S configuration in this pack. Okay guys, update time. I was able to charge the low cell in this pack. And as you can see, we got a green. So the pack is fully balanced and charged now. So we were able to save that. So just for now, we're gonna run with it. I did buy new cells for it, but we're gonna see how long this fix lasts. Hopefully just balancing the pack helps it out. So we're gonna put that guy in the drawer. Okay, our big 8.0 pack. What I found when I checked the voltages is one cell was at 4.06 volts and the rest kind of sloped down from there. And the lowest one was at 3.5 volts. So that's not low enough to damage the cell. I think what happened is the balance just got out of whack. One cell hit a high voltage cutoff first. The charger was tricked into thinking the battery was charged and we were only getting two lights. So over the next, over the last two days, I've been charging one cell bank at a time. As you can see, I'm finishing the last one now. I'm gonna go through and top all the cells off, put the battery back together, use it a few times, and hopefully the batteries all stay within balance because if this thing starts to get unbalanced again, I'm not sure what I would do if I try to get new cells for this or maybe the BMS is bad. These are 21,700 cells. It'd be a little more expensive, but I'm still up for the challenge no matter what. So once this is fully balanced and done, I'll show you guys it has four LEDs and that's it. This battery repair series will be complete. And hopefully in the future, I'm gonna keep showing you guys ways to repair your power tool batteries, including replacing cells, but we're not gonna have to do that in this video, thankfully.
Alrighty guys, just got our 8.0 pack fixed. As you can see, full bar. So now I'm gonna test this in my Milwaukee vacuum. I need to vacuum my truck out. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the heck out of this pack, then recharge it, and then I think she's good to go. So hopefully we don't have any more problems with this thing not charging up all the way. Only time will tell. Worst case scenario, if it does start to drift apart again, I'm just gonna end up rebuilding it with new cells. And if it ends up being the BMS, well, there's probably not much I can do about that, but we're gonna get as much life as we can out of these packs. You guys should try as well to fix your own packs. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next one.